Hey there fellow astronomers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to No Man's Sky. Episode 13, Celestial Scanning. Does analyzing plants and um, minerals, so, so what that gives you is it gives you a little bit of um, units. At the moment, I'm not strapped for units. I have plenty, but it will also reveal like, uh, I'll show you in a second. It will also reveal like extra resources that you might get that you might not know about from the thing. So, uh, to demo, here we go. When getting this cobalt, I also have a chance to get the hydrogen as a secondary resource. So primarily I will get mostly cobalt, and then I got like 27 cobalt, one dihydrogen as a result. And here's another one, the stalag tight, might, tight, I don't know. Has a chance to give me silk. So this was 15 cobalt and three silver. I would have gotten those resources anyway, even if I didn't know about them. It just reveals it as a um, as a bonus. No, I don't want salt. So I have a plenty of cobalt. I'm gonna delete some of the stuff I don't need. Is there still a radioactive storm? Man, this is a long storm. So this planet might not be as... Oh, there it goes. Finally, it says it's clear. I was going to say, this might not be as hostile as a planet as I was on before, but these storms last a long time. Okay. It's pretty survivable when it's not storming. So this is, uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, is if I wanted to farm dissidents material, this is the planet to do it. So I'm going to add that to you and farm, um, repair material. So this planet is very tame compared to the other ones I've been on. It's possible to find, like, beautiful, lush, colonizable planets that are still dissident. That's a possibility. That would be the best possible dissident planets to be on, as long as the uh, radiant shards and inverted mirror farming was plentiful. Because you can get lush planets that are dissident, but the resources, the dissidents' resources are just scarce. The scarcity and abundance of those resources as far as I know, is like quite random. Um, and you just have to, you have to land on the planet to tell. So right now I just need more radiant shards. But since it's, this radioactive planet is pretty hospitable, I'm just gonna um, fix my multi-tool fully before leaving. It's, it's, as anyone that's been in the stream for a while knows, this is the nicest I've had it by like, quite a factor. Stalagmites, you might trip on stalactites. Hangs tightly to the roof. Thank you. That's, uh, gonna make it a lot easier to remember. Uh oh, my mining laser is almost spent. The one thing I haven't gotten is that actually the the magnetized ferrite, the the iron dust. Oddly, there's like not a lot of iron dust stuff to mine here. The ground is all salt. It makes me think. Because generally salts you get from oceans, that like this radioactive planet is like a dried up ocean bed. Or at least the the physical biome that I'm in right now is like dried ocean bed type biome because of all the salt based stuff. 
Plus, those look like corals, right? It's like, this should be salts, but just isn't. Pretty wild. But given that the mining laser is almost out of fuel, I need carbon. Sorry, plants. You don't deserve it, but I need to harvest you anyway. Jesus, wait, seriously? Oh no. I was gonna say 99 carbon and it didn't recharge it? There it goes, a lot better. So I'm mostly just looking for uh, the radiant shards, which is probably the most important because they will recharge everything on my ship uh, and also is required for repairs to the multi-tool and the inverted mirrors, which there is one right there. The little harvesters. Once I have all that, the next step will be to find like a facility I can dip into to farm the crystalline hearts as the last piece of the pie. One, two, three, four hearts, and two more mirrors, and some Atlantium, and I'll be done. So it's, it's not that far off. Probably should be subterranean for this storm. I think I have all the shards I need, right? Just one more mirror. Okay. Or two more mirrors, rather. All these shards will allow me to do a lot of teleport warping. The thing is, I won't really need them that much uh, if I use the frigate. So your frigate, or your freighter rather, I keep calling it frigate. There's frigates and freighters and it confuses me. I wish they called the like ships that escort the, the, escort the freighter like corvettes or something. That would be a lot more sensible to me in my head. But the, um, the freighter that I have, the giant ship that you can dock on, that has its own jump drives. And we're gonna wanna use that ship with its jump drives to do the surveys uh, so that we can survey um, four planets. So the radiant shards aren't going to be as useful to me for jumping going forward. You know, I just realized is I don't really need the Atlantium because if I want to get the, uh, if I want to get the, um, the inverted mirror or the, uh, the crystallized hearts, I'm going to need to kill a whole bunch of robots anyway. And I'm going to get the, that resource for free as a result.
Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I ran myself out. What's funny is if I had ferrite dust, I could do an ion battery that would uh, recharge my has protection too. I just, for the life of me, can't find anything that's made of iron around here. So I'll have to go pick up sodium plants instead before I... Oh, are you? No, you're pure fer ferrite. Uh, that was close. 2%. This is a depot. So this uh, depot is um, chock full of random resources. None of which I need right now, so I can leave it alone. Attacking it pisses off the... Um... Oh, here's ferrite dust stuff. Attacking it obviously pisses off the sentinels. But you can make a, a quick buck that way if you're looking for it. So I got the iron that I need for the iron batteries. So I'm about to get out of here. Or about to try to find a um, an underground facility that allows me to farm the crystallized hearts first. There's a comms tower to my right, but there's nowhere to hide around a comms tower, so it's not a good facility to use. It might have a nav... Yeah, it has a nav beacon, though. So these are rather a... Um, what is it called? A starship call. So if you have a nav beacon on you, you can just call your ship to land here. Which is very, very convenient. So I take this back. This is a comms tower, but it also has um, it also has like standalone buildings. So I can use the standalone buildings to hide from the sentinels. So this is actually a pretty good place to fight the sentinels for the uh, remaining resources I need to repair my multi tool. That will give me the four crystallized hearts that I need if I play my cards right. It'd be a lot nicer if I had a paralysis mortar going into it, but uh, I'm here. Might as well do it, right? The paralysis mortar is a game changer uh, in terms of how strong it is. So you can take the... You can essentially just chain stun the strongest enemy out of combat to prevent it from being able to do anything to you. So if there's a, a big mech that is bullying you, you just completely shut it down. Uh, before I start this fight, I need to move everything worth anything that I wouldn't want to necessarily lose into my starship so that if I do die, uh, I don't lose it. So like the cobalt, uh, the deoxite, leaving really only the things I can stand to lose, like, on my person. Now, if I was a sentinel, where would I be? Because I need to piss them off now. What do I need for the mortar? Uh, hermetic seals, which I would need to buy, and um, jelly. The hydrogen jelly, which I could make, but without the seals, it wouldn't be useful to me. Alright, I am gonna uh, go nuclear option here. If I can't find a sentinel, I'm just gonna pull one of the grav balls. Because uh, no, matter, no matter how well hidden you are, touching these... Um, 
Gravitino Balls will super piss... Oh, there's Sentinels over this way. Will super piss off the Sentinels. Two hundred units. That's far away. Trying to lure this dude back to the facility I found is going to be a little annoying. Oh, there is an inverted mirror over here, though, so it's worth it. Oh, uh, yeah, there's sentinels here because there's a uh, the depot. Yep, yep, yep. I'll start this fight off getting the mirror, though. And then, like, race my butt over to cover. Surprise! So what I want to do in this case is continually piss them off, not hide from them, so that they... Um, I lure them... To where I have a oh god a radioactive supercell approaching, so that I have um, protection from uh, from the elements and also from them. But I need to do it quick because there's a giant radioactive storm about to hit me. Even if I don't lure them properly, it doesn't really matter because. Uh, I do have that inverted mirror now, which is what I really needed. Oh god, storm. Okay, yeah, I dropped aggro. What I'll do is I'll just, I'll just, um... Let me in! Jesus. My poor dude was like cooking. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just uh, I'll tickle a grav ball. That sounds dirty, but I'll tickle a grav ball to uh, to piss off the mechs, the sentinels around here. So one more mirror and four hearts, and I'm done. If you're wondering what this facility is, this giant tower is above my head. It's um, it's. A comms tower, which is one of the sort of points of interest that helps to drive a lot of the missions. Like when you contact Artemis, that um, that NPC that I was trying to rescue before, use these comms towers a lot for that. But otherwise, they're not really all that useful outside of um, that th those specific types of missions. Let's grab all 180 units, 169. All right, I think this is the closest one. Maybe this one. Yep, that's closer. Another decent way to make money is if you find a planet full of Gravitino Balls, and if also the Sentinel reaction to you stealing the Gravitino Balls is pretty low, pretty tame, and the planet's like chock full of them like crazy. It's um You can make a pretty penny by like stealing them as well. This would be one such planet if it wasn't so radioactive, because those sentinels like I stole the Gravitino ball and the sentinels couldn't even find me. Which is a indicator that it would be very easy to just collect everything, everyone that I find, and uh get away with it. Because it's about 40k a piece. So again, I think salvaging ships is probably more paying for your buck, but 40k for a quick grab is is nothing to uh, to scoff at. Just need this damn storm to go away. So here's the ion batteries I need. So I need one for the scanner room. 
I needed some for some other tech I was installing. Probably exosuit tech. Oh no, it was the it was the broken shields that needed it. So never mind. Yeah. Well, this facility isn't working for pissing off uh, mechies. I'll spend maybe like five more minutes trying to find... I'll put just a random vote timer. It's not for voting, it's just for searching. I'll spend five more minutes trying to find a facility that's going to allow me to kill mechs. To kill the sentinels easily. And then I'll give up. Because I want to get to scanning. It's long overdue. Any building that you can enter is going to be a building that's uh, going to help you kill sentinels. Trade center, not so much. This is a... Okay, yeah, that's a... Artifact site. Nothing to hide in there. I want, like, an abandoned... Uh, manufacturing facility, or... Uh, an observatory, something like that. It's one of those, you'll know it when you see it. If you can use it for cover. <sighs> Another trade? Come on, man. It's a radioactive planet. Who wants to trade here? planet sucks. It's better than every other distant planet I've found, but it still sucks. The storms are long, and they hurt. Maybe I should be in higher orbit. It's probably better on the bit rate for visibility too. Oh, here we go. It's tiny, but I can hide in there. If I wanted to kill cr critters, because I have a bunch of quests to kill critters, this thing's full of critters. Oh, and there's an inverted mirror over here. Right on. That will kick off the, the, the fight. Oh, come on, Swarm. Hunt me better. You guys are... Terrible at finding me. So I think the, um, ow, that hurt. The, my frame rate is also taking a, a poo. I might need to, uh, to reboot at some point but i think the um the materials that i'm looking for is mostly going to be off at, uh, uh i'll mostly be able to loot those off of the larger uh sentinels the other way to repair this stuff is to um is to go black market go back to the uh the outlaw outposts and to buy the black market repair kits. Repair kits are expensive, but 
if you have the funds, you can do it that way too. Where'd it go? Oh, it's invisible. Air quotes. Oh, I hit the bugs. Protoss versus Zerg. It's too bad they don't really fight one another. So I'm at uh, three tier threat already. It should be sending me the, the bigger ones that have the hearts that I'm looking for. Because I have no such hearts just yet. I only have the the raw resource. Oh, how did I drop to two tier threat? What the hell? I am threatening! Come on, fight me! At least the stupid lava cores went away. The biological horrors. They can get obnoxious when they uh, they really swarm you. If you're trying to harvest their um, their eggs, you can end up being spawned with like dozens of them that swarm you. All right, I'm now at four tier threat, so it's gotta send me something big. Here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. And these are the big ones that you probably want to cat and mouse a little bit, if you can help it. The paralysis mortars really help out with these, because these things um, have, like, mortars of their own and flamethrowers, and they hurt. The, this thing clipping through the ground is what killed me from before. There it goes down. And I have one crystallized heart. So this is how to heart farm. To repair the multi-tool. This requires a, a bit of dedication. It doesn't help that my frame rate is dying. Streaming for nine hours. Without rebooting the game, we'll do that. What is interesting is that after all this fighting, I haven't gotten a single echolocator. I don't think. So if I was trying to kill these things for echolocators, it'd be pretty frustrating. Ooh, I got lucky. I didn't break the egg sack. And that thing will have another heart. One of the other advantages is the um, random loot that they're dropping. Some of it has been healing me, so that the injuries that I've sustained... Oh, freaking repairs. The injuries I've sustained uh, mostly have, have healed. No healing, big boss. My shield broke, and I accidentally triggered the biological horrors. So I need sodium and a wiring loom to fix that shield. So it's offline for now. Oh, shoot! This is the one with the heart that I wanted. I didn't see it invisible next to me. There we go. 
And I'm headed to a five tier threat. This would be a lot easier if I had, like, scattergun mods and things like that. Uh, I don't. But I am slowly fixing up my, uh, my tool. I only have two spots left that are broken. Oh, don't get close to me. I could definitely do without the, uh, the giant radioactive storms. That much, I'll say. Is this the new computer that I was hoping? No. If it was the new computer, I'd be running at, like, perfect frames. Sadly, I didn't have the time or physical health to do that. Alright, there we go. There is, um, typically a reward that you get for clearing all five, uh, difficulty waves depending on what types of uh, mechs you're killing. Whether it's uh, dissonant mechs, regular mechs, uh, dissonant flying mechs, or dissonant or regular flying mechs, the rewards will um, vary slightly. And the last one I need is out there. It's just, he's right here, but it's very stormy. Don't flamethrower me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. Yoink. Alright, multi-tool is 100%. So at this point, I have a ship that I'm very satisfied with, and I have a multi-tool that I'm very satisfied with, so I don't need to really hunt for better ships or multi-tools. I'm kind of done with that. Uh, so I am going to drop aggro from the uh, from the everything and maybe reboot the game so it runs a little smoother and then we'll get to uh, scanning for col colonies I might need to go underground for the ditching aggro Unfortunately, I didn't keep the heat up long enough to um, to trigger the five-tier reward, but I don't really need that. I was only here to repair my multi-tool. How is the storm still hitting me? I'm so underground. What the hell, storm? Here it goes. Finally. I'm, a little, I'm like a little naked mole rat, like, you know, half a kilometer underground now, and I was still getting full radiated. You can kind of see when I clip the camera out how underground I am. So once the swarm isn't hunting me, I'll go back to my ship, and then I'll uh, I'll do a quick reboot, because, uh, let me see what my performance monitor says. Well, now that I'm underground and I'm not shooting anything, it's actually not complaining about anything. The other thing I could do is just lower the graphics. To my much dismay. So once I restart it, we'll run a little smoother. I am a champion! Alright. So, really quick reboot. Be just a second. See, doesn't this look way more pleasant? I want to live on this planet here. Pink grass, blue skies. Seems awesome. Oh, uh, your destruction warning? I think the menu music, boot up music, is kind of loud sometimes. Oh no, it's 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 not. Cool. I got lucky.
Yoda likes any and all attention, even attention that's bad. Like my my kid sometimes pets him by like holding his neck. I make sure he's not getting choked. I just want to preface that, but even like weird pets like like head grabs, he's like all about. He doesn't care. Radiation protection. Okay, that's a little smoother. So, uh it is officially scanner room time. Let's get off of this um radiation ridden hellscape and get into our freighter. So you can also, much like your own ship, you can summon your freighter to where you want it, which is pretty convenient. But I uh, I actually prefer to jump around in the freighter, freighter to do the scanning. Just personal preference. It also saves on fuel when you jump in the, when you park. Okay. Sorry, that hurt me as much as it hurt you. I think I like glitched through the freighter and it freaked out. And made a lot more noise than normal. Um, yeah, it was it was brilliant parking. Um, so let's do this. Right, right. So in the freighter, you can only build in the green spot back here. Oh, also the uh, trade mission should be done too. So here's the scanner room. I want to put the scanner room um, like as the first room. So I just deleted the original room. And now I can activate the planetary probe. Probe. And the planetary probe will show me all the planets in this system. And I don't have to go surveying. Now, I will note, the information you see here is not perfectly accurate. I don't know why, but there's two different code bases for, like, surveying planets. There's the code base that exists for the freighters and the code base that exists when you're, like, physically on the planet. Um, so some data is correct. The data that is always correct is whether or not uh, like the planet type. Uh, so like Gamma Root is a radioactive planet, you know, Selenium is a hot planet, so on and so forth. That is always true. Um, so if I find a Starball planet, I know Starball planets will always be of lush or paradise type. Um, and the other thing that is always true is, uh, like, the resources that are there, whether it's, like, copper or uranium. However, it might be activated copper once you get onto the planet. So sometimes you actually need to put a boots on the ground to confirm. But um, but the, the current priority right now is uh, do surveys until I run out of fuel. So what I would like to do at this point out is... Um, periodically run surveys for habitable worlds. So I'm going to refuel the freighter's uh, hyperdrive. I don't think actually turbo boosting the hyperdrive matters. Um, and then survey a, a bunch of solar systems and then do something else for a bit so it's not so grindy. But here's the trade fleet. So for the fuel I sent out, I gained 26k units, 33k units, 34k units, a Viking dagger, and that's it. So it was, it was pretty blah. Sometimes you can get like millions and millions of worth of stuff. Sometimes it's just like, eh, oh, it's okay. And everything in between. So that one was kind of a bust, but like, you know, whatever. It was free stuff. Uh, so here's how to do the jumping. You go to the warp drive. So you can manage your fleet here. And the fleet that I have here, um, every time it, uh, I send it out, it has a chance to come back damaged if it, if it couldn't face the challenges. And it has a chance to level up. So right now it's a C-class frigate. Uh, it can, as I deploy it multiple times, it will slowly get more experienced and more experienced up to like an S-class. And it will gain additional... Um, additional modifiers on the ship. So right now, this ship is a trading specialist, which it every type of ship there is, it will have. You have combat, exploration, industrial, trade, and support. Uh, the support is kind of special. What it does is it reduces the fuel uh, needed to deploy your ships. Um, and then this trade ship is actually pretty good because it came with a built-in plus to six to trade, which is uh, fairly meta. Um, ideally, what you want is ships that are very cheap fuel-wise to deploy. That
that would be ideal. So you want ships that have a very low fuel requirements here. Expensive to deploy ships um, will are are uh, are not worth deploying. But um, the freighters, the freighters don't have weapons. They're just. Uh, I'm sure you've you've probably played games like this where you just deploy NPCs out to run missions for you. Like Assassin's Creed has that mechanic. You know, there's a lot of games with that kind of mechanic, where it's just like generic mission mission runners. So that's what that is. So in order to try to find uh, habitable worlds, thank you for tuning in to No Man's Sky, which originally streamed live on Twitch August 19th and August 20th. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any feedback, you can let me know there as well. But please keep in mind that this was a mini series, so all of the content has already been recorded and changes cannot be made. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to help to influence the games that I play, please join me on Discord. A link to Discord can be found in the description of this video and also on my website. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers and Twitch viewers that turned out to the marathon, my Patreon patrons, and viewers like you that made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow space explorers. <laughs>